Good day, YouTube. Warbles on a lot here. Back at the uh, window frame game. The following day, I've already disassembled this bit of it. And we have our screws duly held in a receptacle. We've got the bottom frame left in place. We've got the top frame removed. The side frames have gone away. The sun is in the sky. The Tower of Power is adjusted to be good for the next two hours. The pyramid is damn near full of electricities. And the Tower of Power is succeeding in putting in seven and a half amps. The little inverter is pulling a third of an amp. But the big inverter has already been in use for a bit. Feeding up via the Tower of Light and Shower all the way over to the laughingly described machinery shed where one of these with its line showing how much wrongness has been left there and the face which has to be evenly cut and cleaved in a single plane can be demonstrated didn't bother drawing a guideline on that side because i've only got eyeballs on one side of my head so I can see what's happening on this side of me. I can't reach around and see what's happening on the other side. So there's no point having a guideline on that side of the job, eh? And that there then is the togetherness of the top edge cut at the factory. And that just there is where I have already removed it, taken away all of the offensiveness on that side and that's now the same length as that one and I have not yet started to modificate that so I don't know I think at this point in time it's probably a good idea before proceeding cut along that dotted line merely because that's where we measured it at yesterday uh, I know the very inner edge of the track there lines up pretty much with the black ink mark which I placed on the inside of the track there and for that to line up with the angle of the dangle I think I am going to have to cut that but yeah I'm just going to go and check again because I am told that there's this very famous um, aphorism measure twice cut once Interesting idea. Wonder who thunk that one up. Okay, so that's lined up along the, what's well, actually going to be the bottom edge of the window. Here we see the top of the frame engaging, or at least it will engage when I clear the molten, molted, the molten, molten solidified plastic swarf. Interesting job. There we go. Now it should bloody work the way the people who invented it envisaged it working okay so that's the lower one in its track that's the upper one set in its track and now, okay, now that would work sort of near enough for government operations, but still got to take that off in order to get that to close up by basically bringing that bottom edge down. But yeah, the way that is, it's, it's at least kind of sort of functional in that you could put it together like that and the windows wouldn't fall out of it straight away because you've got, you've got the overlap of the window in the track hmm make any sense right now let's go and this time we'll see if we can carve a spoon or spoil a horn
Now that for go blow me rig, eh? But it works, Timo Sabi, it works. And, whoops, bugger. Try again for the alignment. I don't think I up for cucked it either. By hand and by eye, still works. As long as you get your alignment marks right and you get preferred hand in the form of a vice. A vise, which I've been using hmm, probably since I was about eight years old. So she's a 55 year unit in my experience. And by the look of that little tag there at the factory cut end, they might have used a belt sander as well. And now we will just sort of open up the slot for the joining tangs to go into. I have no idea whether I can do this on camera and show anything worth seeing without cutting myself. Let's catch those. Bend those little boogers. Right. And now I think this should work. I really truly do. So we unplug and we stow the power cord. And on the way, we verify that we've replaced the solar power pretty much as fast as we were using it. So, switch off the inverter and unplug the machinery shed power line. I'm sure it all appears to be a little bit anally retentive and control freak-esque, but if you don't do this shit in a ritualised way, then you just you fuck everything up and who wants to do that you know like much better if you do it properly and then it stays done and you haven't got to fucking redo it it is kind of sort of the same system that i installed here 33 or so years ago but they've made the windows narrower to make it less likely that somebody can pop a window out and climb in and they've also widened the panels to 750 mil instead of 500 but yeah these have been in here since uh, 1991 early 1992 i'd say 1991 never had a problem with the windows they open they close the spiders live at the corners of them. I leave the webs there because how do you expect the spider to deal with mosquitoes and little tiny flying insects that I don't want coming into my hut if some idiot comes and pulls their bloody web down all the time. Bit off topic, but you know, if you're going to go talking about windows and lights and living in the bush, well, in the forest, all things are interconnected. All things are interconnected. And if you don't want the mosquitoes coming in through the window cracks, then you've got to make the windows fit, eh? At least that's the theory. There we go. Another one. See that there, can you? The bottom of the window actually goes to the corner of the track on the frame. Okay. There you go. Pretty much like a bought one at this stage. And now the fun bit begins because this is the not rectangle, which is going to go there. But not until after I cut a slice off it to make it fit as a sandwich sort of thing. Fun, isn't it, hey? 
retrofitting something that should have been easy. But as the snail and frog eaters say, you can't make an egglet without smashing some orms. Now I could fire up a 3 kVA generator to run the 850 watt angle grinder with a cut off wheel, but I think I'll just go back to chin snips. It's only one little cut. Ideally, I won't get it too far wrong, and if I do, I have got more sheets of tin available. Bubble. Got to get the angle of the dangle just right or you'll cut off line. You've also got to make sure you don't cut open the back of your hand. While maintaining, maintaining the opposite curves. And you've got to be control on the other side of it too. It's really quite interesting. And it's always easiest if you can get the near side piece to roll up like I am. Don't know that I've ever tried to do this on camera before, but... And as you can see, I didn't cut either bloody hand. That's an old one, that was yesterday. I don't know whether you can see that, but I've got that hole to line up. And I'm basically going to go along and get that one in, and that top one in. And then see how we go along the whole thing. I expect a lot of swearing will occur during this, so therefore I am going to do this off camera. Okay, well that's kind of, it's as structural as it can be. This frame has split about that far along there. Now you can see the light glimmering in there. So I've put a doubler plate on this side and when the shed is up I'll have to put doubler plates on the other side because yeah the plastic window frames are not sufficiently strong as to cope with the bending moments of this bloody great big giant panel. Um, so that's how the frame come to be split and busted and that's probably what that sticky tape is supposed to be for. Um, but anyway, I have plenty of material with which to make and pop rivet doubler plates to locate the remaining bits of the plastic window frame in the steel shed and maybe I'll run around there with silicon and clean up the gaps and make it look all pretty but at least at the moment it's more or less sort of kind of functional I think better than it was anyway and in the fullness of the time I will join those up with other pop rivets but once again that's really kind of got to be done after this defect has been repaired. 
So there you go, and now you know that's what happened the day after. But I must admit I'm kind of sort of cheerfully terrified as to what's going to happen when we go to put the panels, which have been factory cut, to be all flat and square and ship shape sort of thing. Everything 90 degree corners and everything fits and it's all done by a machine. And we're going to put this on the slab which has been done by people because it's going to be kind of important that the slab is in fact level. Now, see the paint line up under there? That's a spirit level on a paint line, on a door. On a lawn locker, which is screwed onto a box made out of four logs, tie wire, the mortise corners all sitting on a dry stone wall to lift it up off the ground and get the logs level. I'll be honest, I had a bloody lot of difficulty working on my own with a crowbar to jack those logs up and level them with the spirit level and get it set up. So when I built the hut and hung the doors, the doors on the hut, if you'll forgive the slight obstruction caused by the power cords going through them, the doors on the hut, they open and they shut. Yeah. And they hang level. This one hasn't opened since the drug crazed homicidal maniac tore the doors off me hut probably 10 years or more ago and uh, yeah when I put it back together I only set it up with one side sliding but flat square level if you get that flat square level if you start off with your <coughs> your foundation sort of thing if that's flat square level then your doors open and shut and everything sits right and so just for shits and giggles. After lunch yesterday, my daughter's crew of friends and relatives showed up to erect her flat pack on the slab. And uh, it always did sort of look as if that corner was maybe perhaps a little bit on the lowness of the side. But uh, If the door's square, then that door jam is a parallelogram. In my simple under-constumbling of geometry, there is no other way for that to be happy mean. That's not too bad. It says there's a bit of fall off to that edge. That says there's a bit of fall down towards the centre. That says there's a bit of fall going that way. And that says all kinds of not good things in the middle of the doorway. That's not too bad. That's pretty good. Yeah, that's, that, that's got the fall that was sort of observed from a distance. Yeah, shit about a bitch bum. Yeah, pretty good by the middle of the block. again and here it's not so bad but basically from about there it slopes down to there yeah we've got a high end quite a high end still high on the right high on the right high on the right okay and that one says it's sloping down that away and that says it's sloping down that away 
real bad. Yeah, and that's dropping down there as well. And this little bit's not too bad. So apparently, unless I miss me guess, the reason why the doors don't fit is we need to jack that end up and jack it up until the doors swing and hang straight. And then put up with whatever happens there and I don't know, maybe stick some sheet metal as shims underneath the front of it. You're not supposed to glue it with silicon or anything. All I can say is it's supposed to be a bathroom shed. At least it's going to drain water off towards the sides because it's sort of kind of like a, a slightly warped trapezoid rather than a flat square. And to look at a slab with me Mark 1 eyeball, I'm afraid I didn't pick up on any of that while any of it was being done. But you know, that, that edge is sitting on high, that edge is lifted proud off. That edge is sitting on high, but it's dropped down. So yeah, only thing to do really is jack up that edge and see what happens to the rest of it. Does anybody now understand why I was pretty bloody happy living in the one shed that I succeeded in getting up quite so bloody long? Because there's just so many fucking irritating pitfalls and traps and shit to go wrong and stuff you have to know about in advance before you start to do anything. Otherwise, these little bloody garden sheds prefabricated are nothing but fucking trouble. And then you have to look at it for the rest of your bloody life because once you do it, even when you try and undo it and redo it, like I'm doing over here. They are shits of things. I'm really kicking my own ass for not having glued bloody stones together with concrete and made myself a series of bloody stone buildings. But you know, with a bad back and a crook foot, I'm just not really that super confident. I really didn't expect this shit with the windows. And I didn't expect slabs to have to be regrown. And I didn't expect slabs to be bloody warped and twisted. So Warbles is having some encounters with realities as life as a home builder. Ha 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 ha! Ciao!